can't tell you my problems, meditating my silence. But I keep pushing my pen, rotating my stylus. Brokenness feeling like sin, not no breath, low dollar. Used to be left on red, now all the girls go holler. Now all the girls go follow. All the fake friends gon' pile up. I need peace to borrow, get that shit right back tomorrow. Somehow all the fans go bravo, smile so All right, you guys, so like I was saying, the shit that's in the streets about um, the takeoff death is very, very unfortunate, you guys. Um, we know that when he died, they were in Houston, Texas. Um, you guys know the rules of the streets um, as, a, you know, when it comes to like big time artists or people with a lot of money coming to a city where, you know, there are gangs and there are otherwise other people who are preying on them, you know, to rob them, to do whatever that they need to do. Um, a lot of times people, when they go to these big cities, they will report to like who are like kind of the head I don't want to say gang members because, you know, these now these people are all grown and stuff, but they are known to have had gang ties in the past. OK, I'm assuming in Houston, Jay Prince and his people were the ones um, that you would go to to like let them know you come in, kind of checking in, making sure you kind of have protection, making sure you don't go in the wrong areas, making making sure people don't try to jack you. Okay, it's the same when you go to L.A. I mean, you check in with, you know, it sounds silly to people who are not from the streets or from people who are not in that world, but it's a very real thing. Okay, I'm assuming you go to Chicago, there's some people there that you check in with, and then you go to New York, there's some folks there that you check in with. Here in Atlanta, there's people that you... So, I would, you know, it's just a known thing. So... Of course, with uh, Quavo and Takeoff being with um, in Houston and Jay Prince's people was supposedly being the ones that was supposed to be showing them around, I mean, taking them around and making sure that they was good. Um, and for Takeoff to have died on, you know, kind of pretty, pretty much on Jay Prince's people's watch, you know, people are saying that he had something to do with it. Now, we don't know if that's true or not. Um, but that's what the rumors and shit are out there. Um, and it was hot. Like the, the story was big when it first happened, when takeoff was first killed. Um, but like I said, now that they have somebody that they've arrested, you would have thought that this would have died down. Jay Prince con has continued to do many interviews about this, um, unfortunate happening, I'm sure he feels that because his name is out there that he needs to speak on it. Um, but it's happening more and more. It's getting more and more volatile. He's starting to call out Offset um, and saying how, you know, he's tired of Offset and people blaming him and blaming, I guess, his son and all of that. Um, and he's he's done many interviews about it. Finally, Offset did do a video responding to him you know, basically saying that he hasn't even really said anything and that has been, um, you know, it's been Jay Prince who's been the one that's been doing interview after interview talking about this, you know, and you hadn't even had thought about the family, thought about Takeoff's mom, you know, like this stuff is just not dying down, okay? As you continue to do more and more interviews, it gets messier and messier because we have more and more people weighing in on either sides. And it's just like, can we just please let take off, rest in peace? And can we try to try the person that they've arrested? And if he is the one that's guilty, put him in jail. And can we just move on? But you guys know a lot of times when the streets are involved, it's a whole lot of other shit that's happening, again, behind the scenes that we're not privy to. But Offset has responded to Jay Prince and then he had to come back with his I have a dream speech. I was like, did he write that down? <laughs> you know how some people talk really, really slow and that's supposed to make you think that they're like more, that they're smarter, you know, when they talk real small, slow like this. You know, I don't know why that video that he put out had such a strange sound to it. I mean, it truly sounded like somebody, like a civil rights speaker talking. <laughs> but anyway, 
you know, he's responded back to Offset and, you know, talking about how Offset then forgot who he was and how he protected him in L.A. and he protected him when he got his ass beat out here in Atlanta and all of this. And Offset was just like, I don't know what you're talking about. Cardi then jumped in and said, no, that's not true. When she went to L.A., you know, she met up with your big you and your um, whack 100. You know, those are the ones that like the the go the big time crip and blood that's out there you check in with them you know i don't know why jay prince would have anything to do with what was going on in la honestly you know you have your people out there in a la child i can't even be <laughs> it's so much it's so much you guys but but what i'm saying is i just really wish that everybody would just kind of let it go okay Let's try to get some healing happening. Let's try to make sure we hold the people responsible. And then let's let's try to move forward. And then hopefully, like I said, Offset and, and um, Quavo can fix their problems as well. It's just so many things that's compounded on top of each other. Y'all see like this? Y'all remember that dance? <laughs> it's so many things that's compounded on top of each other that it just can't, it never seems to go away. It's just not going away. And it's too bad. Because at the end of the day, everybody is sad that Takeoff is dead, you know? So, um, that's, that's what's happening over there. But I, I just, that, that thing would, the thing with Jay Prince is like, I remember hearing about him before we would see him a lot. You know, I remember hearing about him and I would hear that people say, oh, he's a big time music legend in Houston and all of that. And I respected him as that because that's what you guys was telling me. Like he was very big in the music world in Houston and all of that. And it kind of seems like him continuing to go on social media kind of it kind of like it tarnishes your legendary status because then it just seems like you. Why are you on social media with this? Like you should be too big for this. You know, you should, if this is really something, maybe it's something that you could handle off of social media. Because when you get on social media, you got all of these other people that's going to start weighing in as well. And it's just, I don't know, it's just not a good look to me. It's not a good look. You don't see the other legends of LA, New York, Chicago, my, uh, Florida, you know, Miami. You don't see all them doing these, whoever these big names would be. You don't see them going to social media and doing that. So it's just kind of strange. It's kind of strange, you guys. Um, I, I understand wanting to defend yourself and wanting to clarify but to keep doing it over and over and over, you see what I'm saying? It just seems like it just kind of tarnishes, uh, you know, the respect that people used to have for you. So that's all I'm saying. But I mean, the man can do what he want to do. I mean, it's clear that's what he is doing. But yeah, I just don't know. It's not a, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. But uh, yeah, you guys, that, that's it was going on there. I'm sure there will be more and more. It's getting to be very, very messy. And I'm hoping that this doesn't end in a bad way as well. We don't need anybody else dead on either side. Like we want to live. I want to see my black men out there make it. And um, I, I don't want to see any violence out of this back and forth either. So that's it, you guys. Let me let me move on to the next story. To hide my sorrow, say the shaky in Verado. I can't hold a frown to All right, you guys, Renaissance tour updates. I already told you guys about the whole suite situation, how my book club was trying to get a suite. We ended up not doing it, but that is a great option. Did you guys get your tickets? I actually asked on Twitter if you guys were able to get your tickets. And many of you guys, at least the ones that answered my question, were able to get their tickets. Now, there were other people that were waitlisted, and this is where the confusion comes in, because, child, I thought everybody was getting their damn ticket that had signed up the other day. I thought they was getting their tickets on Monday. Turns out, nope, that's not what happened. Some people, I guess they gave a code. Some people got the code to go get their tickets, and then other people were waitlisted. Um, and the people that were waitlisted, I guess they're waiting to hear if they're still, they're going to have another round, another batch of tickets, and they're waiting for that to happen to see if they can get their tickets then. 
They had groups A, B, and C, depending on the city that you was in and the wait list and the codes and all of that. Um, some of my friends that are huge, Beyonce, like stands, I would say, were waitlisted. I felt so bad for her because I at least feel like the ones that's truly the, truly the stands like that should be able to get the tickets, you know? But alas, some, it just kind of was the luck of the draw. Some people got the code to get their ticket apparently and other people didn't. So there's still a lot of people there waiting to see if they can get the tickets. Now, this is all before the general population gets the chance to buy the tickets. That's when the you's and the me's that didn't get <laughs> codes and wait lists and shit, that's when we can go then sign um, on to Ticketmaster and try to get these tickets. Um, and that's what I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna try my luck. They say that it's gonna happen in March sometime. I'm just gonna try my luck then and see if I can get these two tickets for me and Jada. And that's gonna have to be that, okay? And if I can't get the tickets, then I guess I won't be going, you know? And it won't be no love lost. I'm not gonna be like heartbroken or anything. But um, I just wish, I just don't understand why it's got to be, <laughs> be so difficult to go to a damn concert. Like it's just way too much, it's way too much. Um, and I think, I wish there was a way that they can just keep resellers, not, individual resellers that might buy a ticket and just decide to sell their ticket. I'm talking about the resellers that can buy a big batch of tickets and then hype up the hike up the, the price super high to thousands of dollars and resell. I wish there was a way to just get rid of them. I don't know how they would do it, but I wish that there was a way. I know that with the wait list and the codes and shit that that was their way of trying to do that, but there's still some resellers that was able to get the tickets from what I understand. Cause I've seen people trying to sell tickets for, Nine thousand and six thousand. You guys are killing me. But yeah, I mean it happens. So and that that's too bad. But y'all have to let me know if you got your tickets. I'm excited for you guys. You know, um, but I really do feel like those that are like the extreme fan. I mean, it would be a shame if they wouldn't be able to get to the get to that concert. Like I I can go or I can not go. It's not going it's not going to make a break me or Jada. But you know, I, I do feel bad for those of you guys that are just like the ones that's doing everything Beyonce related and then can't get to the damn concert. She ain't had it in 6 years, you know. Yeah, that's too bad. Um also, let's talk about Ivy Park, y'all. Okay, we're going to sprinkle this story in there. So they say that the Ivy Park um, brand of clothing line, you guys remember she has Ivy Park on Adidas. Remember she originally came out Ivy Park and it was with um, um, Top. She originally launched it with Top Shop, I think in 2016. And then it, it was doing okay there, but she ended up relaunching 2018 with Adidas. And that was huge, okay? Um, and we were all excited about Ivy Park. Um, and they said that it was going to be a brand that did very well for Adidas. Now they're saying that, well, the, the brand might not be performing as well as they wish that it would have been, okay? They're saying that for 2022, they had projected that the brand should make $250 million. The brand only made $40 million. That's still a lot of money, but when you project in 250, 40 million ain't doing that well, okay? The year before, 2021, the brand made 93 million. That's where they had projected 250 million for the following year, didn't happen. Um, they had projected, I guess, long-term projections, they had projected it would be 335 this year. Right now, they're projecting to make $65 million, okay? So they're saying that the brand is pretty much is way is well below fifty mil. I mean, uh, fifty percent. Definitely not doing as well as they had hoped. However, the brand is still very loyal to Beyonce and saying that they are still you know locked in with her. They're looking forward to the creative things that they're going to be doing together. Right now, there is no speaking of them dropping the Ivy Park. Um, label from Adidas. You know, Adidas says that they're proud about what they've put out so far. 
the Ivy Park brand, I mean, the, the items, they have some very cute things. They have had some very cute things, but I think in general, the look of the Ivy Park stuff has not been that appealing to the average consumer, okay? I've always said that Beyonce looks phenomenal in Ivy Park, okay? Every time they do another drop, all of the, every single picture that they put out there is beautiful. The stuff looks great and everything. I am wondering who is buying it though, okay? I ain't seen nobody in that cow print thing that she had put out. Actually thought it was kind of cute, but I didn't see nobody wearing that. You know, she's had a bunch of drops that haven't done well. Like the first one I think was the burgundy and orange or the burgundy and yellow, that did well. But then with each other drop that's happened, it just hasn't performed the way that it was. And yeah, I'm just like, who is wearing her stuff, okay? I mean, some people are buying it, but definitely not at the rate that they thought people would be buying it. So y'all have to let me know if you guys are buying Beyonce's stuff. Um, we all know, now y'all know I love Beyonce. I just told y'all and gave her all the accolades. Shout out to Mimi. But fashion might not necessarily be her bag. And that's okay, you guys. That's okay. That is okay. Because her bag is music. All right. That girl is creative when it gets time to be in the studio, when it's time to be on the stage. Okay. That's where she lives. Fashion just might not be her thing. And that's okay. Okay, she's tried it a few times and um, or maybe she could just get some other people on her creative team that can help her, you know, help guide it into another direction so that it then will turn out to be more lucrative and successful for Adidas. I mean, it could happen. It could happen. I mean, I'm sure she got the money to put whoever she need to put in place to make it happen. But yeah, y'all, y'all ain't buying that Ivy Park. <laughs> Y'all just go on and say it. Y'all can just go on and say it. But that's what they saying, child. It ain't doing as well. Um, but Adidas says, so what? We is in this for the long haul. Who has been doing so well? I shouldn't be saying his name too loud. Cause I have the front door open and he's laying down there at the storm door and he has not barked or anything. He is being a good boy for me today. I'm going to have to make sure I give him a snack. I did have a talk with him before we got started. <laughs> Next story. Congratulations are in order to your boy LeBron James, okay? He was able to break a record himself, you guys, on the courts as a Los Angeles Laker. Um, he actually surpassed the... Um, most scores, let's see, what, what is, let me make sure I get it. He is NBA's top all-time scorer, okay? Now, previously, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has held that record. Um, he had 38,387 points. And LeBron, of course, was projected to do that in this last game. He did after a 14-foot uh, fall-away jumper that made it. Um, he now is the highest scorer at 38,388 points. Okay, when it happened, it was a whole bunch of fanfare. Uh, they stopped the game for about 10 minutes, you know, as everybody celebrated. We even had uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar actually come out onto the um, court and hand the ball over to him like in a gesture of like kind of like passing the, you know, passing the baton. Now LeBron is that person and good for him. Okay. It's so funny that LeBron continues to break records and do so well and the Lakers just doesn't. <laughs> And you guys, I can talk about the Lakers because they are my team, okay? But if you was just following LeBron, you would think that the Lakers was just doing awesome, all right? If you were just following his social media, you would think that they were doing awesome because LeBron continues to do very well, but the Lakers, not so much. Child, not so much. But hell, even in that game, they ended up losing. They were playing Oklahoma City, um, Thunder. But... Yes, yeah, it's, it's funny to me that it happens that way. But anyway, not to not to put a cloudy sky over LeBron's win because he does deserve it. 
good for him. He had his family there, his kids, his wife, who looked beautiful in her. So she just, honey, when, when it's hard for her to be looking good, sis be looking great. Oh my God. And she is a just a normal looking, beautiful black woman, which is so nice to see. Okay. And if she's had any enhancements, it is very minimal. It's nothing, uh, nothing crazy. I mean, just beautiful, just a beautiful woman. So it's nice to see that his family was there in support, and of course, all the fans and all that. So good for him. Kareem, like I said, held that that role for 38 years before him. That's a whole bunch of damn points to to score, isn't it? We'll see who's. I don't think the next person. I think the next person that's you know, that would come. That's going to take some time for them to get there. Okay, so good for him. I just wanted to make sure that I put that story in for you. Congratulations to you, Mr. LeBron James. Running from strain, running from things, running from schemes. Guys, next story up. So your boy, Kevin Hunter. Boy, he has fallen on some hard times. And as hard as the times are for Kevin Hunter, honey, the judge was like, we don't give a fuck. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about that. Okay. But you guys know that Kevin Hunter was awarded spousal support when him and Wendy Williams divorced. Since Wendy Williams is now having a financial guardian and her bills are not being paid by her, but ex instead by somebody that's in charge of her finances, um, they stopped paying Kevin Hunter his spousal support. Um, and so he was complaining that he used that money to pay his bills, okay? He's now complaining that he can't pay his HOA, that his home is in threatening to go into foreclosure. He's saying that he can't pay his credit card bills. He's saying that he doesn't have health insurance um, and that he needs to have a hip replacement surgery. He said he hasn't paid his car insurance. I mean, times is really hard. Apparently, nobody else is working. I mean, I, I guess his wife or his girlfriend is not working and he's not working. Um, and so I guess he's, yeah, he was relying on that mo money solely. And now that they've stopped it, you know, he was taking it to court trying to get the spousal support back up. Well, the judge was like, nope, you ain't getting it, um, and dismissed it without prejudice, which means that if he wants to go back later and try again to sue for this money, then he can do that. But as far as this here case is concerned, you won't be getting no money out of this one, okay? The judge then said that they should go to mediation, see if they can work it out that way. But, um, yeah, the judge was not awarding that, was not awarding um, um, lawyer fees. Like, the judge was just like, yeah, we, we ain't doing none of that, okay? And the main reason is because Wendy Williams does not have income. Even though she probably has money still in her bank, she doesn't have income and has not received income since October of 2021, okay? So I'm guessing the, the judge is just like, well, she doesn't have income, so that means that she's not paying you. I guess he was trying to go off them savings. But <laughs> the judge said, absolutely not. Um, so somebody going to have to get up and go get a job. I know it's probably going to be hard considering he needs to have hip replacement surgery or whatever, but um, what, the, what the girlfriend doing, okay? I actually was surprised because I thought that they would have given him that money um, considering, but the fact that she doesn't have income, then that just was like, yeah, she no income, that mean no income for you either. Now, when Wendy Williams was getting income, she was making $10 million a year, you guys. $55,000 an episode, and you guys know that she was on Monday through Friday. So her work week, she was making 275,000 damn dollars or something like that a week, okay? Oh my God, that story is still very, very sad. I mean, it's just so sad what has happened with Wendy Williams. I'm sure she still has a lot of money in her bank, but damn, can you imagine? Oh my goodness. So I, yeah, Kevin, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but you and Sharina, y'all gonna have to figure out something else because Judge said, nah, you ain't, you ain't getting nuns of this. Continue to pay her bills, but we ain't gonna put the spousal support as a bill that needs to be paid right now. Too long. I can't stay down too long. 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 Too long
guys' next story up. I have a couple of congratulations in order, you guys. It's new babies and new relationships and relationships that's ended, unfortunately. Let's start with the good, okay? Um, first, we have Gucci and Keisha. Congratulations are to them. The happy couple, the Davises, are, have welcomed in their second baby. This will be a baby girl. We've named her Iceland Davis. You guys know that they had a little boy in 2020 um, that they named Ice, so Ice and Iceland. Very cute, okay? Um, although I wish it was Iceland, I-C-E-L-Y-N-N -I -I -E -N, instead of Iceland, like the country, you know. But any anyway, child, that's neither here nor there. This is their second child together. However, they both have children from previous relationships. So congratulations to them. Um, we also found out today that Notori Naughton of Power, Fame, and her husband, Two Lewis, okay, the number two, T.W.O. Lewis, um, they are expecting their first child together. You guys know that they just recently got married and um, now they're expecting their first baby together. And she is pregnant, pregnant. So she's kept that under wraps. But, you know, y'all put out the required picture of the stomach out with the man, you know, holding on to the stomach. You know, we've got a couple of those that have surfaced. So... She looks like she's, if she ain't in that third trimester, she's close, okay? So, um, yeah, this will be their first child together. She has a child, a uh, five-year-old child, Zuri, from a previous relationship. I'm not sure if two has any ki kids, but this will be their first together. So, congratulations to them. And then, you guys, I, I mean, this seems like not the right place to throw this in, but I don't know where else to put it. Um, but, uh, Fallon, Fallon and her husband, um, Jalen, you guys know Fallon was the one that was married to, oh boy, Simon, that Portia ended up stealing and getting married to. Well, now Fallon, Fallon had married Jalen, who I was always wondering about that relationship because he seemed very childlike. He seemed very, he seemed like I don't want to say it, y'all. <laughs> but maybe if you think real hard, you would know what I was going to say. And so their relationship just seemed very strange to me. It just seemed like it was something that she needed to do because, you know, she, her man had gotten stolen. And so she was just like, well, that's okay because I got me a new man too. But now you guys, they are reporting that they, even though they still love each other very much, okay, that um, they have decided that they're going to break up. I was like, man, if y'all be loving each other so much, what the fuck are you getting divorced for? Okay, just work that shit out. But I guess sometimes love is not all it takes to make a relationship work, okay? I mean, I do know that. But some days you don't even love the niggas no more, you know, but you, you made the commitment, so you're going to have to work it out and try to get back to love the best way you can. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, y'all, so she say that she can't do it no more, and he say he can't no more. And, you know, we just recently found out that they had a miscarriage. That was actually very sad. Um, they did already have, she already had one child, but she was pregnant for a second time for him. And uh, it didn't work. Um, she ended up having a miscarriage. And so, yeah, I guess they've just decided to call it quits, you guys. So that didn't last too long. Okay, grand opening, grand closing. Pain, running from strain, running from things, running from schemes. Couple things I'm hungry. I didn't get to get anything for lunch, go out to eat anyway, because I needed to do this video on my lunch break. And Jada has my car anyway, so it's not like I could have ran and got something. And I mean, there's stuff here, but nothing I want to eat. I'm going to have to figure out something because the bitch hungry. Lastly, you guys, the Super Bowl is this weekend. Okay, y'all know I don't know shit about football, but I do enjoy Super Bowl festivities. I love me a good Super Bowl party. I love me the Super Bowl foods. I love to see the Super Bowl commercials. I made it a point actually to not see any of the commercials because they usually put them on social media before. It was just like, what's the purpose of having the commercials if y'all already showing them ahead of time? That's all the fun in watching the Super Bowl is watching the commercials, you know? So I haven't seen any of the commercials so at least I have something to look forward to. And of course, I am going to be tuning in to the halftime show uh, that Rihanna will be giving. Did I say who's even going to be in the damn Super Bowl? <laughs> so it'll be the Philadelphia Eagles 
versus, I believe this is Kansas City Chiefs. I only have Chiefs versus Eagles. Um, I thought they changed the name. Didn't they change the name? Do I have that wrong? Because I thought they changed the name. They said that it wasn't politically correct to have cheap. No, 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 no. That was Redskins. That was Redskins, right? Isn't this like Washington football team or something like that? Anyway, Chiefs is pretty um, offensive too, really. I mean, I guess if we're going to get into it, the Braves ain't really that. That's kind of offensive as well when you see the mask. Not the mascot, but the, yeah, the mascot on their, their jersey. Anyway, y'all, I'm getting off track. So, yeah, I think it's Kansas City Chiefs and the um, Philadelphia Eagles will be playing in the Super Bowl. That will be on Sunday. Let me tell you what they got lined up for entertainment. We have Shirley Ralph. Okay, she's going to be doing um, uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing Till Earth and Heaven Ring Ring of the Harmonies of Liberty Y'all, I could sing the whole thing, but I won't. Okay, but she gonna sound just like that. <laughs> she is gonna be singing that uh, pre-show. We also have Babyface. Babyface is going to be singing... Oh, what did I say he was gonna be singing? Oh, beautiful for spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain majesties above the fruity plain America America God. And then we got uh, Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton and Troy Kotzer. They're going to be singing. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud? At the twilight. <laughs> a bitch just wanted to say it, y'all. Uh, that's all before the show. And then, of course, we know that Rihanna will be singing, um, performing in the halftime show. As of now, it's just Rihanna. I'm sure she probably will have some special guests up there with her. But they haven't announced who those special guests might be. I'm thinking maybe we can get an umbrella with Jay-Z. Considering Jay-Z has a lot to do with the entertainment, you know, portion of the show, uh, it would be cool to see them up there doing Umbrella, okay? Amongst all of her other hits. I mean, if she doesn't do it, fine. But I would like to see that. Um, who do you guys think? Or did, have they said who she's performing? Have they said any other people that's performing up there with her? Um, some people seem to think that Rihanna doesn't know how to carry a halftime show. And I was just like, I mean, the girl ain't performed in a long time, granted. But the girl has done plenty of concerts. Okay, and even if you might, even if Rihanna might not be your cup of tea, um, I happen to think that Rihanna does very well in her concerts and performance wise. I mean, yeah, she's come a long way. Like when she first started, she didn't do as much, but now I think that, and all you need to do is slap you some dances up there. And even if you don't do as much as they do, as long as you can keep the entertainment going, like, what's the problem, y'all? Rihanna gonna be fine. And now they're saying that. There's been rumblings that she's going to announce a world tour after the Super Bowl. I was like, honey, I don't care who tell it. No, what I will say is I'll believe it when I see it. We'll see. I mean, that's it. We'll see if she says it. But I'm just like, she's going on a world tour. and She don't have any new music out. So are we thinking that she's going to surprise, you know, drop new music after the Super Bowl? That don't seem like that's happening. I just think that that might be wishful thinking. But, you know, stranger things has happened. And I'm not always right. <laughs> 
So I could be wrong and maybe she could. I mean, yeah, I, I, now that would be a concert I would try to get to too. Yeah, you guys, that's it. The Super Bowl is this Sunday. You guys will have to let me know who you're going for if you're a football fan. Um, would you be, is it the Eagles for you or is it the Chiefs? Okay, y'all put all that in the box. May the best man I win. I know a couple things I show, a couple things I don't. Tell you my problems. All right, you guys. So, this is a cute little number, right? I got it from one of them little wig places I saw on Instagram. They just happened to have a little sale. You know, I think I paid like $80, $90 for it. I think it was I Love Me Hair or something like that. Just wanted to try something. Because y'all know I ain't too sure about the curls. It's always hit or miss. And I just define the curls that's why it's flat but it's cuter when it's fuller i put a picture on my instagram y'all saw her over there but uh anyway y'all that's for the people that's gonna ask i know everybody and don't give a fuck about the wig but there are gonna be some people that ask so that's for y'all okay i'm gonna get off of here we do this every single week so make sure that you thumbs up the video comment and subscribe and make sure you Until next time, rock stars. Bye.